Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's Heidi here with She Shed Arts. If you're jumping on, make sure you say hi so I know that you're here. Hi, Donna. Hi, LaDonna. How are you? I got a Donna and a LaDonna. Hey, good to see you ladies tonight. Oh, thank you so much. This is such a fun piece. So we worked on um, this same template on Monday night, and we're doing a different design on this template. Hey, Madalena, how are you? All right. Oh, LaDonna, you're from New Mexico. That's awesome. Glad to have you here tonight. So I'm about ready to get going. I'm just getting my computer situated here, and I have got a fun design for you guys tonight. Um, so we worked on this same template on Monday night, and I promised you that tonight we would have a totally different design for this, and I am so excited to share it. Oh, LaDonna, thank you so much for sprinkling. I love that. I do appreciate that. Um, so let me get uh, a link in here for you guys, if you're not familiar. Oh, thank you for the flowers. Thank you, Madalena. That's wonderful. Um, so I've got the link in there if you guys would like to check out my website and see what easy.art is all about the info is there so we're gonna go ahead and get started so this is our template we're gonna use tonight this is an easy.art template it is on a quarter inch piece of MDF and it has the design laser etched into the piece here this one is so neat because it actually has the cutouts in here and so it's laser cut out here so it's just real precise and really nice and just a fun template to work with so this was our design that we did on Monday we did spring tulips so I'm gonna do something totally different tonight so I hope you guys are ready for something fun um, so tonight I will be using my Pittsburgh punch set and I will be using hold on get my light my colors all lined up here possibly my DIY swoosh tools I'll be using my uh, nail daughters and that's that's probably it if we may find something more to use but um, so what I'm gonna do tonight is a kind of a spin-off of a St. Patty's theme so everybody knows tomorrow St. Patrick's Day and it is one of my favorite holidays so we are going to do a fun um, my my thought on the theme is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so we are using rainbow colors I'm using all deco art Americana multi-surface satin and I'm just using traditional six rainbow colors not seven so I have everything but indigo so let me I'll read off the colors as I'm pouring them out here I've got lipstick pumpkin patch canary turf green true blue purple sunset and the bonus kicker tonight hold on here and I'll show you guys the bonus kicker so I think you guys will love this so I've got my my uh, base colors out here so I just line them up in my tray in the order that I'm going to use them now are you guys ready for the bonus kicker we have deco art extreme sheen 24 karat gold metallic so this is our gold at the end of the rainbow hey Annette good to see you welcome oh your swooshes oh my gosh yes yeah, send me pictures Oh, I love it. Yeah, you can just message me, Madalena, and message me pictures of your swooshes. I'd love to see them. That's exciting. Or you can just post them right on here. That's fine. Okay, so I've got my template painted black. So black is 
Uh, about 99% of the time I am using black for my base coat color. And the reason I like to use black is because I absolutely love the way that the colors um, show up on that black background. So tonight, on this center section, <laughs> oh, thank you, look at all those stars, that's awesome, thank you. So tonight, in this center section, you know a lot of times a mandala will start with a center dot. Tonight we're going to do something totally different here. So when I designed this one, I left this center open specifically because I wanted to do some different things. And I wanted to get a little bit outside the box on these designs. So for this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, that's exactly what we're going to start with here in the middle. So we are going to do random dots making up a pot of gold here in, where did you find the templates? Okay, LaDonna, so if you go to that uh, link that I left you there, easy.art.com, you will find all about the templates there. So there's a couple different ways you can get those. I have a subscription box. This template here is in part of the April subscription box. And uh, each month there's three new templates involved in the boxes. And then I also have other templates to purchase on my website. So you can go check it out at easy.art.com and that'll give you all the info there. Okay, so I am just starting off with random gold dots. So I am making it uh, just nothing that is, there's not one bit of this part that is laid out in one specific way. I didn't like the way that one was looking. So I started with a couple bigger dots and now I am just going down and filling in this center section with just random smaller dots. And I really want it to just look like little gold coins. So that was my thought here. So we're doing the rainbow theme with the pot of gold at the end. So this is going to be my pot of gold here in the center. Now remember on metallic paints, if you have not used metallics before, they can have a tendency to get a little stringy. So you do have to be a little mindful when you use metallics because they will tend to kind of have a little hair string up off of them. So you have to be really mindful when you use them. Now I'm just doing really random dots here. I'm just seeing where I can fit them in and I'm going smaller and smaller. And then we'll get down to where I'm using just the nail dotting tools and we'll just fill in with really small little dots here. I'm looking for any other place that might need a little fill in. And we've just about got the bigger ones filled in. So what I do, oh, thank you for the stars, Dixie. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Kim. Something different, right? Okay, so now we're going to move down to our ball daughter. So this is a ball daughter that I got at the Dollar Tree. And it has a large end on it and a small end on it. So we'll go in and see if we can fill in just a few with the larger end, though I am really limited here on what space I have left. I put a lot of dots in there already. So we may just do really well with going down to the small end on this and then maybe even going down to some smaller uh, ball tool dotters. So like I was saying, I really just wanted this to be random. I definitely did not want there to be a dot right in the center because I want it just to look like little gold coins sitting in there in the center because it's like our pot of gold here. So we've got our pot of gold waiting on the rainbow. Is everybody ready for St. Patty's Day tomorrow? It's one of my favorite holidays. I love it. So that's why I was so excited to do a, a little St. Patty's theme here. I thought that would be fun tonight. So I'm going to go down in size again and just really grab my nail art tools here and really get some, some small little dots here. So I'm even going to where I'm, I'm dotting and offloading some of that paint and just really making those small. 
as I'm going through and I'm just filling in this whole area with those little bitty micro dots just so it's nice and random all right how's that looking to you guys yes to St. Patty's Day did you get your daughter at the Dollar Tree Oh, okay, Madalena. You know what? I'll message you after the live tonight, and you can share it to me with the um, through the message, okay? So be looking for me to send you a message, and I'll send one to you because I want to see your swooshes. Okay, so we are really getting this filled up here. All right, so that center is pretty well filled up. How does that look? Does that look like little gold coins there? So now we're going to work our way out here on the rest of this template. So the next section that we have here is the little section here with these almost looking petal looking little things. Now I'm going to do just a sample size here. No, nope, that one's too big. I'm just kind of feeling, feeling in here to see what size is going to fit. And we're going to start with the red. And I am just going to put a red dot right in the center of each one of these petals. I'm lining it up. There is a line that kind of goes through the center of that where I can line that up. And I just want to get it in the center of that petal to work my way around where we've got our pot of gold here. So do you guys like themed uh, dotting mandala, dot mandalas. I love to do themes. Oh, thank you. I know, isn't that red pretty? Look at just those three colors together. The the back black background with the red and the gold almost looks kind of Christmassy. Maybe we'll have to bring this back out at Christmas time and do something really pretty with um, gold and green and red. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Okay, now we're gonna go down. And I'm just really going to get a small, this is uh, my Pittsburgh Punch set. And I am just getting a small dot right above where I was a minute ago. And the area below it is actually small enough that I'm going to bring in uh, one of my nail art tools to really get down in that area on the inner part of that little petal. So that's one of the neat things about these templates. You know, traditionally, if you're doing a, it is very regal, isn't it, Kim? If you are doing a traditional um, dot mandala, you pretty much are working from the inside out. The neat thing about these templates, because everything is lined up for you. So if you want to work on a center area and skip out to a different area and then come back, you're able to do that because that design is already laid out for you and you don't have to work on the prior area just to get to the next section of the design. So for me, when I started doing these, um, I knew that I had some designs that I wanted to use. And when I started designing them and actually getting them put onto the wood, I got so excited because um, it was really very freeing and I was able to do a lot of different things. Okay, now that I got the red in there, I can go back in and see some areas where I need more gold. So I'm just kind of seeing where I need to maybe fill in. Because I want that center area to be loaded up with our little gold coins. Okay. All right, so we've got our gold and the start to our rainbow. Now, next thing we're gonna go out to our orange and I wanna do a very similar thing that I did in the center. So we're gonna go kind of where it's a uh, random dots and then structured dots and then random dots. So we're gonna kind of alternate back and forth with that type of um, design where it's random and then structured. So, I'm going to 
How do people use these when done? How do they, oh, okay, that's a great question, Dixie. So um, you can use them as a standalone product, uh, hang it on the wall, put it in a, um, a little um, rack to put it in. You can um, use Kim, who's on here today. She does uh, her all of her dotting things. She uses plate racks on her wall, and they look absolutely beautiful. So that's an idea. You can also put resin on them and use them as a uh, hot pad sort of thing, um, or like a trivet. Um, so I have not done that because I am not a resin pro, but I do need to try that because a lot of people ask me about that. So that's just one thing that I know there are people out there that do a lot of different resin projects. So um, that's definitely something that's on my bucket list to try to do with these because um, I have not done that. Now, another thing that is a great thing to do with these when you have the square ones, you can actually make an entire wall collage with these. So um, you can get you an uh, 18 by 24 frame. And these are, the square ones are, uh, let me grab a square one here. The square ones are six by six. So you could actually load up an entire 18 by 24 frame full of those square six by six pieces. And, um, Boy, look at that. We were talking about Christmas, and I went right to the green. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so we're, we've are we got our rainbow going in a different order. I love it. Um, so you can um, make a large quilt type out of this. So, I mean, there's lots of things you can do with it. So I just, uh, really honestly, I have uh, a lot of them. And so I am in the process of getting them into frames and doing those big multi-design pieces. So when I do get those in frames and get some up like that, I'll take some pictures for you guys so you can see them. But um, that is my goal, is to really have lots of them together. Were you guys looking at that and saying, she is not going in rainbow order? We got to talking about Christmas, so there you go. We have an idea what it would look like Christmassy. Um subconsciously I must have been thinking ooh I need to do red and green so here we are we can see what it looks like and that's gonna um, we'll be challenged to make the rainbow look fun out of order so anyways did that answer your question uh, Dixie Oh, that's a great idea, Kim. So Kim said that she wanted to glue magnets on the back of hers and make really pretty fridge magnets out of them. I love that. Oh, yeah, sure, Dixie, no problem. Um, you know, that's the one thing. They are definitely fantastic for pure decoration, you know. So my complete intent is to use them as art in my home. So, you know, the idea of doing a large collage with these um, for me, sounds wonderful. I love that idea to have, you know, just lots of collages of these beautiful mandalas. So I think that sounds like a fun way to do, um, you know, a collection of these all together. So I'm just getting these random dots here in this area. And uh, the next set out will be a more structured dot area. So remember I said I wanted to do random, structured, random, structured. So that's kind of what I had planned out when I started this. So we're going to get these filled up here. And for those of you who have not done the random dots before, you will find out they're kind of time consuming. Uh, because what your goal is, is to really get a lot of, hey, thanks, Shelly. Your, your goal is to get just a lot of really random little dots here. So I always start with the larger dots and then work my way down smaller and smaller to fill in the areas. Because um, if you start with the smaller dots, then you'll never have space for the larger ones. So you got to start bigger first. And work your way around until you get everything kind of filled in. Now, I'm getting down to where I have 
very, I'm feeling challenged with all the random dots. Oh my gosh, Jamie, yes. So that is definitely something if you like things all lined up in a row, random dots are definitely a challenge for you because um, they have to, they make you kind of stretch your imagination and do something a little different. So I'm, I'm coming back in with just a little toothpick and doing really, really little teeny tiny micro dots here. So toothpicks are fantastic for that. You can use uh, the pointy end of a sewing pin for this kind of thing, you know. So the, you know, the thing is, you can use a lot of things from around your home to um, do dots. I mean, you can use the end of a pencil. Um, you could actually use both ends. You can use the eraser end if you have not used the eraser and it's brand new. Pencils are fantastic for creating dots. Now, if you have a pencil that has a very pointy end on it, you can make really nice little neat uh, small dots with that. So, you know, challenge yourself to find things around your home to use as dotting tools. When I first got started, um, nothing was safe. I, I tried a little bit of everything. Now my favorite dotting tools are my, my punch set and then also my uh, drill bits. So I do use drill bits as well for my dotting tools. And, um, you know, I have purchased other things that, you know, I thought would work uh, well for me. But I always go back to my uh, DIY dotting tools. I love them. Okay, I think we have that pretty well filled out random. Are you guys doing okay with the green next to the red? Is that... Um, is that messing with you? It's kind of messing with me. I really wish I had the orange there, but it's okay. Because we're going to go back now, and we're going to do, um, I believe we'll do our orange right there in that other spot. Or maybe I'll do yellow. I think I'll do yellow. Because I want to make sure that it looks good next to that green. And I'm just testing out some sizes here. And I'm working with this Pittsburgh punch set. So if you guys haven't seen those, this is what they look like. It is a 28 piece set. And I actually got these at Harbor Freight. They're called a Pittsburgh punch set. And what these tools are, these are tools that would be used in a workshop to punch holes and things. So I use the back end of them, just like I do with my drill bits. I use the back end because there's 28 graduated sizes and it works really well for dotting. So these are actually my very favorite dotting tools. They, um, they probably will last me forever. They're heavy duty um, steel. Now, um, they are heavy. So there are people sometimes will say, oh my gosh, those... Uh, Punch tools are really heavy. They are heavy, so I will give you that. Um, but they're uh, very nice because they always are very uh, precise with the circle. So I always know that I'm never going to have an issue with something being off on a circle when I use these. So I just know that they are a great tool. And... Um, they're readily available. You can get them at Harbor Freight. So if you don't have one close to you, you can order online. And they're very inexpensive. It's $9.99 for the set of 28. So I know, Kim, isn't that right? The um, Those definitely have uh, so much as far as variety and all that sort of thing. Now, I'm going back to my small little nail daughter here and I'm just going to put a little dot on each side of this because I've got room here and I want to outline it. Now it looks like a little snowman with stubby arms um, but I want to get this um, area filled in here and then we'll go back up to the point of that one. Okay, there we go. 
You're right, Shelly. The weight of the punch tool, yes, absolutely. It really helps to um, it helps to kind of anchor in those dots. Now I'm just going to put a small dot at the peak of this petal. Because I think I want to do just some little walked dots here on this. So this is an eight-sided mandala. So it's nice um, as far as symmetry on this. I love it. So I'm just going to go around. I like to go all the way around one way and then come back and go the other way. I am re-dipping each time so I have the same size dots here. We'll end up with just a nice little triangle above that large dot. this small little area here and I think what I would really like to do is just I'm going back in and grabbing our orange here because I missed that I think I'm going to do just some little swooshes here and just fill this little area in with just some little swooshes all orange so that's kind of what I'm doing with this rainbow seam. I'm filling in each different layer with that respective color. You know, not um, not mixing the colors in the layers. So it's just kind of like the rainbow um, going out there. You like that, Kim? So let's just do some little baby swooshes here. I'm using the small end now of the ball daughter. And I'm just going to swoosh on each side. Clean my tool off there. Now I'm going to continue on this side here and just keep going around, filling in with my swooshes and I think I'll probably be able to stay with the same size here, maybe down for the next one. I don't know, I may need to go just a little smaller. That area is getting a little small. I think I'll have to go down in size there. So we'll finish off over on this side. And then we will go down in size and do one more tiny little swoosh. Now I'm going to go down just about another size. So these other ones, um, the other nail art or nail ball daughters, there are 10 different sizes in those sets. You can get these on Amazon or you can get them 
even at, at your local like Sally Beauty or something like that. They're, they're more pricey there. Um, I think I saw these at Sally Beauty for like $9.99 for the set. But you can get them on Amazon for like $5.99. So if you're ordering something else, you know, you can throw that in and it's not too hateful. So they're a great little set to have, though I will tell you they're not um, like a predetermined set of sizes. Like if you get two different sets, all the pink ones may not be the really small little ones. It may be different sized. So I mean they're not universal on their sizing. So you just kind of have to figure out what sizes will fit where. And I think I can... Fit one more. Okay. Ooh, I like that. I know, I know. Don't you love the contrast? So that's one of the things I love to do. Um, on my pieces, I really like to do an area that has something totally different. So if you swoosh in one area, you dot in another. Um, so that's the contrast between the specific dots and the random dots. So I like that contrast. So that's just for me, that's just something that I like. And um, I think that is a fun way to bring a piece together. Now, I'm going to, I was going to do the blue next, but I think I'm going to do the purple next to the yellow. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Kim. <laughs> I love to do contrast. Okay, so that being said, since we already went off kilter on the green, so, okay, so let's talk about colors of the rainbow. So across from the red on the color wheel is green. Across from yellow is purple. And across from orange is blue. So when you put these colors next to each other, it offers a high amount of contrast. So, um, that's what I'm doing here. So since I had that happy little accident of putting the red and green beside each other, I'm now deciding to go ahead and do the purple with the yellow. <laughs> oh, thank you, Donna. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Okay, so we've got the purple and, and the yellow next to each other, right? So for our local peeps, that's our um, high school colors, purple and gold. Um, so everybody loves that. Now I'm going to take my large uh, ball daughter and just put one dot at the top of each of these. And then we'll do a little bit of walking, some dots here, and fill in that area. Now, have no fear, there will be more gold coming in. So, um, <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Kim. Yeah, so anytime you put those opposites next to each other, it's just a real high contrast. So, you know the other rainbow that I did? So, this one that I did um, last week. So, if you look here on this entire thing, I did yellow, purple, yellow, purple, yellow, purple. And then I did the contrast here. Green, red, green, red, green, red, and so forth with the orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue. So what that does when you look at it, it just gives you that huge contrast to where um, you know that they don't quite, it's like they almost don't go together, but they look really good together. So, you know, that's a great way to do that if you're um, questioning how you want to do, I mean, I'm a big one for putting rainbow colors all together. I do that all the time. Um, but I I really have been enjoying doing the contrasting. Now, I'm walking these backwards. So I'm starting with my bigger dot at the bottom. And I simply am doing that because my space up here, where I'm at, I've got that big dot here. And I had a really small amount of space to go between the big dot and the design line. So that's why I decided to, um, you need a color wheel. Yes, a color wheel is an awesome tool to have. 
Um, they have really nice ones at Hobby Lobby. Um, so, but that's something if you guys are wanting to do more with that, we can work on color wheels in the Easy Dot Art uh, HQ. So if that's something that you ladies are um, wanting to learn more about with colors and, and all of that, absolutely we can do something like that in our dotting group. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but I had a little purple issue here. So you'll get to see me clean something up. So I just took a Q-tip there and I moistened it. And then I am... I just uh, squeeze the water out and then I can come in and pull up that wet paint. Now, on this, I always say if you can't get it fixed, there is always what I call rescue paint and that is black paint. So that's the one great thing about having the uh, back black background is you can always rescue. Um, whatever you did with black. Okay, let's continue on here. So, um, you ladies let me know if you want to do a little uh, learning about the color wheel and that sort of thing. That's one of my favorite subjects. So, the other thing that I like to talk about, not only the color wheel and what um, colors go well together and how to blend your colors and mix your colors and things like that. I also like to research and talk about how colors affect us emotionally. So that's a lot of fun too. So um, you know that when you, you look at blue, um, please on the color wheel, okay. So when you look at the color blue, what kind of feeling does that give you? Um, tell me what you think of when you see blue. Yes, on the color study. Awesome. Okay, so what do you guys think of when you see the color blue? Calming, right. So they always say blue is great for a bedroom, right? Because it's soothing, it's relaxing, um, it just helps you um, calm down your day. And it's just one of those colors that you know you can, um, you, you don't feel stressed when you're around that color. So I'm just putting a little walk dot area here. And it's just kind of continuing on out with that purple. There is an edge here right, um, right above that orange that I'm putting this area on and just walking out some more color here. Okay, so blue is calming. So what do we think of when we see purple? Do we think of like royalty. Um, Kim, you said it earlier, regal. It was that um, the gold on there was regal. So purple is the same thing. It always, um, you can't always think of royalty, maybe about, um, you might think about spiritual aspects of things with purple. Um, then, you know, things like red. You know, people will associate red with anger, um, but it's also associated with passion, right? So, you know, there's a lot of different um, emotional responses that you can get from different colors that you use. And that's one of the reasons I really, yes, a mystic. Purple is very uh, mystic. Yes, sturdy. Very good. Yep, true blue is a basic like black and brown. You are right. Very good, Shelly, because that is so true. Um, so, you know, just thinking about the colors that we're using um, in our artwork, on the mandalas especially, they play a huge role for me because I really, um, you know, it helps to initiate a response in your system. So when we're, let's go back to the very red, passion and energy, right. 
So let's go back to the very first discussion we were having about how to use these um, templates once we're done. What can you do with them? So think about creating an entire picture of different designs of all different blues and putting that in your bedroom. How amazing would that be? Just very calming and relaxing. Um, it would just be amazing to have that in your bedroom. I think anyways. Um, so then a lot of people like to put red in their kitchen. So um, I'm, I am over that one though, because they say red increases your appetite. I don't need any help in that category. So I won't be doing that. But you do see a lot of restaurants that do red as their color theme. And why do they do that? Because it encourages people to eat more, buy more, um, and, uh, do more of that sort of activity at their restaurant. So you see that a lot in restaurants. So, you know, that's one of my, my things that I always think about when I'm doing these templates is, you know, do I want a specific color theme? Do I want to use multiple colors to evoke some sort of um, response uh, simply by having people look at it? So that's all the things that I think about. <laughs> I know, me too, Shelly. So, you know, I suppose, you know, as an artist, um, definitely you are attracted to color or you wouldn't be um, combining colors and using color and uh, doing everything that goes along with color um, in your life. So, you know, it's amazing what color can do for us. So, um, yeah, definitely. We will dive into that in the Easy Dot Art Club because it's a huge part of picking your colors for your artwork, your mandalas, everything you're doing. And not just dot mandalas, any kind of artwork. Okay, so I'm doing this little, there's a little area here, like a little framework on the top of this petal. So this actually is working out really well. I'm so glad I had that happy little accident because it made me do this purple here. And I love this purple next to the gold. So, and then we'll end up with the blue in that portion there by the flower. And then I have another plan for the flower. So in the one that I did Monday night, I did a lot of swooshing to embody kind of the flowers and the leaves and things like that. So this go round, I really wanted to show you how you could do something different that you didn't necessarily have to do those swooshes in that area. Um, I really wanted to show that you could, you know, do different things and, um, treat those areas differently. So I'm going to go in this blue area, area that's going to be blue. I was just testing out that size there. So I'm just going to put a blue dot side by side here. And I'm kind of just hugging it up in this area. It looks like a leaf on a flower, but tonight we are just treating it as a design element, not as a leaf. So we wanted it, or I wanted it to be a little different tonight. So I'm just pulling this right at the end of where that gold is. And also it's in that area. Um, it, it's the leaf area. I'll call it the leaf area. So that you guys know what it is. And this blue here, oh my gosh. This is probably my favorite blue right now. It's the true blue. It's really vibrant. Okay, now we're going to fill in kind of like what we did with the yellow here. So I'm going to fill in a small little blue dot on each one of these. And I can probably get away with double dotting there 
because on each one, I didn't quite get them level, so there is one on each one that's a little bigger than the other. So I can offload a little paint and kind of fit in what I can fit in there. <coughs> so um, we're going to do the last portion out here with um, what is the part that looks like the tulip. And we're going to do that a little differently. Now, I'm going to go down in size here, and we're just going to fit in a smaller dot of blue. It really just filled up that area. Are you guys liking the addition of the metallic in with this? That's something a little bit different. When I first started dotting, I did a lot of things with metallic. And then I kind of got away from them for a little while. And now I use them a lot for accents or for top dots. So I do like to do that. So what I want to do, or what I had in mind to do for this flower area is, okay, we've got, we've represented all the colors here in our rainbow. So I want to go here and just kind of, um, we're going to see what fits down here. I'm testing some sizes here, guys. Okay. So... I'm going to put a red dot on just this one side here. Now, on this template, um, when I made this design, I did the uh, line down the center because I wanted it to look like that flower was opening there. So that um, gives me an opportunity to kind of split that flower in half. So I'm using that to my advantage here, even though we're not doing a flower, but I wanted to show, since we're doing this rainbow theme here, I wanted to show um, warm versus cool on our little rainbow. So we're going up one side, red, orange, yellow, and then we'll do green, uh, blue, purple. And I'm gonna go down a size here. Let's see. Going down a size and fit that yellow one in there. Now, um, one of the things you can do as you're, you're going through and learning how to use the templates, if you're uh, dotting with the templates and you get a little overzealous with your dot size, and it's too big and the paint goes down into the design line where the laser cut is on the design. After your uh, project is done, you could actually come back in with an X-Acto knife and run it down through those design lines and that'll help clean that up a little bit to where you don't have to feel like your um, design got out of hand there. You can clean it up very easily with the X-Acto knife, and you can even go back in with a little bit of um, black rescue paint if you need it. So you can see how I'm doing the 
the rainbow on the outer edge here of this. And I'm going back down. Um, we'll bring in the blue. Now, I've got the blues and oranges next to each other. <laughs> That's my opposites there. So I'll go over my colors again. I've got lipstick, pumpkin patch, canary, turf green, true blue, and sunset, uh, purple sunset. And then the gold is 24 karat gold metallic. So that's what I've used tonight for my colors. If you guys like this color scheme. Now, the, um, the yellow, there is another yellow that's a little bit uh, deeper, a little bit more uh, um, darker yellow. It's called school bus yellow, and that's a nice one to use too. I kind of go back and forth between using that one and the canary. I like them both. Um, so that's a great option too, the school bus yellow. And these are all the Americana uh, multi-purpose satins. Okay, do you guys like that with that rainbow? And then what I think I'll do, I'm going to come in here with my small ball daughter. Just put a little touch of gold here at the bottom of the rainbow. And I'll come back with a smaller one and put a little touch at the top too. And then we may find some other areas on here that we want to touch up with some gold um, once I get it finished. Because we're going to put a healthy dose of gold here on the end. Okay, now I'm going to come back with this smaller nail dotter. And just put a little touch of gold up at the top. You would have them all top dotted with the gold, wouldn't you? I may go back and do some top dotting like that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But you know, I, I like to let everything dry a little while and look at it before I decide um, what I'm going to do with the top dots. But I do think I have something else I want to do here. I think I want to go in and... This is um, just a little more time consuming, but I think it will really set it off. Just putting some little highlight gold dots here along the outer edge of each of these. I think is really going to top that off. Because remember, it's a St. Patty's theme and we're talking with the um, gold at the end of the rainbow. So I'm putting lots of little gold coins in here. So that's what they are for me anyways, gold coins. And uh, I can imagine just a little leprechaun going around and throwing the little gold coins in the rainbow and all that good stuff. So we're taking our St. Patty's theme to the max here. How do you like that with the addition of the, the gold dots there? I like that, and I'll probably live with it for a little while and decide if I need to come back and put some gold dots on the inside of that 
of the petal. I may do that too. So for those of you who are watching tonight that you're um, not in the Easy Dot Art HQ, you can take a look at that link that I put at the top of the comments. It's easy.art.com and you can go in there and check out the subscription box. It has all the info there and the link to sign up. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Okay, now let's see here. I think I see another area that could benefit from some gold and that is right here and I think this will just highlight sometimes when you get that darker color on the black it's hard to see um, a separation there so I'm just highlighting around <clears throat> around that purple just to bring a little bit of structured random dots yes so I'm just putting that gold around there just to bring a little bit of notice to that area because it was kind of um, pretty dark negative space there let's just go and give it a little highlight Anytime you put the gold in, it's a fun little highlight. Um, the fun thing about the gold is when you, you get, it, get it under a light somewhere. And it's just that metallic. It's so pretty. Very sparkly. So that definitely was what we needed tonight for our St. Patty's theme. set that off. Yes, it did, didn't it, Kim? It really just made that purple stand out a little bit more. Okay, now, the last thing that I wanted to do for this, remember, it's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So, we need gold. I'm going to stir this up a little bit more. And we're going to fill that outside edge with gold. Now, this is going to be another random. Now, I'm starting with, I just have my tools over here that I've already used. I'm not going to use any different sizes. And I'm just going to start with my largest one. And now, remember we talked about metallics get a little stringy. So, I'm just, it is a little stringy. So, I'm just being real careful. When I pull it up, when you're using metallics, you want to dot down and just pull it straight up. Don't pull it off crooked because uh, you'll risk, you could risk running that paint hair across there. Now, you can stir it up and it helps with that. You can add more paint to it and it would help with that. You can actually add a little flow trawl which is a paint, um, uh, like a paint pouring paint thinner. I wouldn't add water to it. Um, it tends to mess with the, the metallics. Now, I don't even like to add <clears throat> much like a, <coughs> excuse me, much like a flow, flow trawl or anything. Because, hold on a minute, guys. <coughs> excuse me, I got choked up there. I don't like to add even much of a flow trawl to the metallics because um, I just like the full-on metallic. So I just know when I'm using metallics and I've, when you've had your paint out a little while, that's when it starts to do that. Um, so you just got to be mindful of your dots when you're putting them down and um, just make sure that you're, you're watching as you pull up off the dot because that's when you're going to run into an issue with having it be stringy. 
So as long as you're doing that, you should be fine. You shouldn't have an issue um, with that. But if you do, really easy to clean up. All you have to do is use the moistened Q-tip. Um, you can even use like a little baby wipe. That is good for that. Um, but if you have a small area to get into, a Q-tip is really good. Um, now, all else fails. Remember, rescue paint is always good. And rescue paint is your black paint. And that will um, cover up any anything that's a mistake. Now, I do try to get that paint up as much as possible simply because um, if you leave the paint on there, it can leave, it can actually leave like a dot mark and you probably don't want that. Um, so, you know, you want to get up whatever the mistake is, try to get it up and, and then if you can't, you can cover it. So I'm just randomly filling out my gold here. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm filling out quite a bit of this largest size dot simply because it takes forever to fill in the small dots. So it's nice to take up a lot of area with the larger ones. But I will tell you, once you get your small dots going in there, that's what makes it look really good when you have tons of little small dots. That's um, more of a statement kind of thing. You know, when you've got all those teeny tiny little dots. But I do try to fill up with a good space with the largers. So I'll come back. I'll go down in size here as soon as I make my way all the way around here. And we'll go down in size. And we'll just keep de decreasing in size until I get the whole area filled up. So this definitely turned it into our gold at the end of the rainbow. Okay, now we're going to go down in size. And once we really start to get different sizes in there, that's what really makes it look good. Because when you have all the same size in there, it's just kind of like, random dots here and there, but when you get the different sizes in, um, it just gives the eye something different to look at. For me, I like a whole lot of random dots. Now, if you have a whole lot of area to cover, make sure you pack a snack, because it'll take you a while. <clears throat> And I try not to, on these random ones, I try not to line anything up with something before. Oh, that's a great idea, Kim. So Kim says um, her eye is seeing it looking like stained glass. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know what? The thing with this template, because of those cutout areas, so when it's behind black or sitting on this black mat, it's hard to distinguish that cutout area but by golly, it does kind of look like a stained glass. So that just makes me think, I wonder what would happen if we filled it in this area, like with some resin and some color in there. Ooh, that might be really pretty. I got to figure out a better way to do resin. I have never been successful with resin. So it's just one of those things that I need to work on so that I can do some of those fun things. So I'm just looking for an area to fill in with a larger dot. Can you guys see that string coming off of the gold there? And uh, that's what I'm talking about with the you just got to be patient with it and kind of let it detach a little bit. Hey, 
Hey, Shell. Good to see you tonight. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Donna, so the resin, I can never get it to set up right. I don't think I mix it right or something like that. Um, and then I always end up with bubbles in it and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I just haven't worked with it enough to really, um, you know, to really perfect it so that I can do it um, on a lot of different things. Well, and the other thing with resin, I will tell you, I probably... What has deterred me from working with it a lot, it's pricey. So, you know, I hate to spend that much money on some something and then um, have to really uh, make a lot of mistakes before I figure it out. So, yeah, there's that too. So that's just me. I know a lot of people have a ton of great results with resin. But that's probably the biggest deterrent for me, Donna, <laughs> is that I just haven't worked with it enough. Um, to really make it work for me. Okay, what did you say, Shelly, about the gold coins? Uh-huh. Yes, that's what I intended. I wanted them to look like gold coins. Um, you know, laying at the end of the rainbow. I did, um, I went to an art retreat last summer, and I actually did a project with resin, and... Oh, I did not like the way it turned out. So, I don't know. And then I messed around with some resin pieces here um, at home because I had that same idea, Kim. I was working on, um, like, I wanted to make some pieces that looked like stained glass. I had that same thought. And it just was not successful the way I wanted it to be, and it didn't turn out. So, I just, you know, probably haven't put enough into it. Yes, Shelly, that is a challenge. So, you know, they say you can you can pop the bubbles on resin, you can put a lighter over top of them. And yeah, I did all that, and then, you know, I'd cover them up and come back 24 hours later, and there's the darn bubbles in my resin, and I was like, oh my goodness. So, yeah, I, it's just something that I, I need to work with. Um, especially, you know, people do ask me a lot about turning these into um, trivets or something like that. So I think resin would be really nice for that, like a heat resistant kind of deal. Donna, are you still on here? There's your train. Okay. Ooh, that's looking pretty, isn't it? So see what I'm saying about the different sized um, just when you get in and do different sizes, it's um, is what really makes it look fun. So I'll do a couple more sizes down. Um, because I know it's, it's about like watching paint dry doing this part. So I'll do a couple more sizes down and then uh, I'll finish the rest of it off camera and, and get pictures for you guys. Because it will take me quite a long time to fill in the uh, little small areas. So um, it's always my goal to be around an hour. I don't want to, um, I don't like to go too much more beyond that because I know it's hard to. Um, to watch all that. So, okay, there we go. Yes, Donna, there's your train. <laughs> we had a lot of trains today in town. So, my studio, like I told you guys, it is like right next to the train track. And uh, for my day job, I work at the chiropractor's office. And um, the chiropractor's in the front of the building. And my studio is in the back of the building, and so uh, we we hear trains all day long. And the last couple of days, it has been very busy with trains. Okay, doesn't that look awesome when you start to get in the different sizes? 
Okay, you guys, I've about worked my way around there. The next part, I will show you just a little bit in one section so you can see what I'm going to do. Once I get down to this, um, to where it's just really small little pieces, literally I am filling in small little areas just like that. So let me do this one area so you guys can see what I do. And it's really just going in and it's just it just takes time. And you can kind of see the effect that it gives. And once I go in with that smaller one. Well, yes, absolutely. That Donna, that is huge. And that is um one of the things that is my awesome perk for working for a chiropractor, he keeps my, for me, it's my neck. And um, absolutely, dotting is one of those art forms that um, you're kind of all bent over. And so, you know, I always tell people in my classes, please make sure you stand up and stretch. Stretch your neck, stretch your arms, stretch your shoulders. Uh, don't just sit there for two hours and dot because it is really hard on your body. Um, okay, so you can see what that looks like. Just this one little area where I am getting the little teeny tiny micro dots in there. So you guys can see what that looks like. So pretty much I'll do that uh, process all the way around. So it'll take me quite a while to do that. So I'm not gonna keep you guys on for that whole thing, but I will post the finished picture so you guys can see it. Um, you guys like that with the uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? That was a fun project to do. So a lot different from the one we did the other night. So um, for those of you that are, are looking for the website, it's at the top of the comments, easy.art.com. Thank you, Donna. I appreciate that. Thanks, Kim. Um, you can check out the information there. And this template is in the April box, and that is uh, through March 25th. So if you order this set of templates before March 25th, this will be included in your April box. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I will look forward to seeing you. I'll, I'll be back on next Monday for template number three of the April box. So if you're interested in seeing that, I will be back on Monday and Wednesday next week with template number three. I hope you all enjoyed this. Have a wonderful, safe, and happy uh, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye-bye.